collecting on a budget is more important than ever. And with that in mind, I'm launching a new series called A Key for Every Budget. Stay here for the pilot episode featuring the character that is getting all of the buzz coming out of SDCC 2022, Namor the Submariner. Let me lay the groundwork for this series for you. We're gonna cover seven budget thresholds. $10, $25, $50, $100, $500, $1,000 and up. And just to be thorough, we're also going to throw in the mega grail for each character we cover in this series. So if we're talking about Thor in a future episode, Journey into Mystery 83 would be that mega grail for that list. For a Doctor Doom list, Fantastic Four number five would be the mega grail and so on. Leave me a comment down below and let me know your thoughts in this new series. But for now, let's get to the books. Ease into the waters of Submariner books with Namor the Submariner number one from April 1990. A stereotypical 90s number one, Namor one has really been overlooked and unappreciated for more than 30 years now. Long relegated to discount boxes along with the rest of the 62 issue run. Namor one features the first appearance of Phoebe Mars and Carrie Alexander along with a retelling of Namor's origin. Written and drawn by the legendary John Byrne, both newsstand and direct edition copies of this book are out in the market. This entry level Namor key has seen a big boost in sales volume following the release of the Wakanda Forever trailer as collectors in the market finally have the confirmation of the Submariner's MCU debut that they've been waiting for. Currently selling for $10 for a raw high grade copy, this book is plentiful and should be the most accessible Submariner book for collectors who want to chase the latest MCU reveal without risking much cash. Our $25 book is Supervillain Team Up number one. Debuting in August 1975, Supervillain Team Up ran for a total of 17 issues, with 11 out of those 17 issues featuring Marvel's original villain team up, Namor and Doctor Doom. That's right, the first villains to ever team up in all of Marvel Comics were Doctor Doom and the Submariner, all the way back in Fantastic Four number six. Supervillain Team Up was a riff off of the successful Marvel Team Up series, where another Marvel character would join Spider-Man every month for a new adventure. Starting off as all good buddy movies do, Namor and Doom are on the rocks when the story begins, but through a series of events, they find themselves partnered up by the end of the story, which would continue on into the second issue of this series. Artist Ron Wilson provided the cover art, while interior pencils came from a variety of artists. George Tusca, Bill Ignanti, and George Evans. The script for the story was provided by Tony Isabella. As of the recording of this video, copies in VF range can be had for our $25 budget, and with a little bit of luck, you may even be able to sneak a copy that's closer to near mint on that $25 budget. As of right now, we're not 100% sure who will take on the mantle of the Black Panther in Wakanda forever, but speculation seems to point to Shuri taking over for her brother T'Challa. There's no shortage of key Shuri issues to collect in the 2009 Black Panther series, but we're really dialing it in for our $50 book. The $50 pick is Black Panther number 11. Published in February 2010, Black Panther 11 features the first battle between Shiri's Black Panther and Namor. The Paul Renaud cover is a great fight scene depicting the two characters, and it could gain favor in the market if it is confirmed that Shuri will become the Black Panther in the new film. Written by Jonathan Mayberry with interior pencils from Ken Lashley, this issue was a prelude into the Doom War arc. What's the likelihood that a certain conniving Latvian ruler is behind the circumstances that lead Namor and the Black Panther to come to blows in Wakanda Forever? Since the trailer release and the SDCC reveals regarding the film, Black Panther 11 has moved from averaging sales in the $25 to $30 range up to selling in the $40 to $50 range as of this last week. You can't swim around in your ugly green swim diaper forever, and even though it took 34 years, Namor sported a new look for the very first time in our $100 key issue, Submariner number 67. Having had a slight title change starting back with issue 65, the trade dress for Submariner was changed to Prince Namor, the savage Submariner, and by issue 67, he had a wardrobe to match. Sporting pants, nice, most of a shirt, an oversized gold belt, 
and wings, or maybe those are supposed to be fins, Savage Namor looks like a badass. Published in November 1973, 34 years after Namor's first fully distributed appearance in Marvel Comics number one, Submariner 67 had a pretty solid creative team. John Romita Sr. handled the cover art, a story from Steve Gerber, and interior art from Don Heck. What we've seen of Namor in the Wakanda Forever trailer indicates that the classic green trunks will be the primary look for the character, but I would anticipate Namor's MCU look to shift closer to this new costume in subsequent appearances currently selling for upwards of $90 for higher grade copies, keep an eye out for this one. If you're rocking a $500 budget, I recommend the classic Submariner number no. one, released back in May, 1968. One of the big premiere issues released in April and May, 1968, along with books like Iron Man 1, Captain Marvel 1, Captain America 100, Doctor Strange 169, and Incredible Hulk 102, Submariner number no. 1 is a fantastic jumping on point for silver and bronze age collectors. Like the aforementioned issues, Submariner 1 has an iconic cover from legendary bullpen artist John Buscema. Roy Thomas would go on to replace Stan Lee as Marvel's editor-in-chief, provides a story for this premiere issue. Picking up where the story in Iron Man and Submariner 1 left off, Namor picked up the new number one, while Hulk, his co-star from the now-defunct Tales to Astonish, carried on with the numbering from TTA, with the return of his solo title in Incredible Hulk 102. Submariner number one is seeing some gains in value recently, but with a $500 budget, you can bring home a nicer mid-grade raw copy, or if you're looking for a slabbed copy in that same price range, a 4.5 is currently selling around the $500 mark as of the recording of this video. And now the big budget book for Namor, The Submariner. If your budget is $1,000 or more, my pick for you and your budget would be Fantastic Four number four, the first Silver Age appearance of Namor. After a number of years on ice, following the collapse of superheroes at the end of the Golden Age, Stan Lee and Jack Kirby wasted no time in bringing back one of Marvel's biggest Golden Age stars. Fantastic Four number four was published in May 1962, meaning that Namor arrived in the Silver Age of comics before Hulk, Spider-Man, Thor, and really just about everyone other than Ant-Man arrived on the scene in Marvel Comics. This issue has seen significant increases in value over the last couple of years. I bought a CGC 3.0 several years back for just 300 bucks. A 3.0 sold for just over $4,100 in June 2022, well before Namor was confirmed for Wakanda Forever. A copy of FF4 can be purchased in the lowest grades, typically raw, restored, or incomplete, for between $1,000 and $1,500 right now based on recent sales. However, by the time you approach the $2,000 mark, the copies present a bit better. Mid-grade slab copies are pushing into the high four figures right now, as a 5.5 copy sold on July 27th for $8,000, outpacing a 6.5 sale in June that went for $7,401. All right, I know what you were thinking. We were just talking about an 8K mid-grade book. How could there be more? Well, with Namor and most Golden Age characters, there is always something out there that goes to the next level. And in the case of the Submariner, there are actually two mega grail keys we could talk about. Marvel Comics number one and Motion Picture Funnies Weekly number one. Marvel Comics one speaks for itself. So we're gonna focus on the incredibly rare and scarcely traded Motion Picture Funnies Weekly number one. How rare is Motion Picture Funnies Weekly number one, you might ask? There are nine, nine known copies of this book. Chances are you probably have more fingers than Earth has copies of this book. Originally envisioned as a giveaway for movie theaters, the project never went into full production, hence the low population count. Despite the fact the issue never saw wide release, Bill Everett's Submariner story would be reprinted and expanded upon in Marvel Comics number one. The original story in Motion Picture Funnies Weekly only has eight pages. By the time the story was reprinted later on in 1939 in Marvel Comics 1, the Submariner tale now ran for 12 pages. This grail book rarely changes hands in public. According to GPA, the most recent sale for a copy was back in June of 2017, when a CGC 3.5 copy sold for $27,500. In all of their history, Heritage Auctions has only sold a single copy of this book. 
In October 2005, Heritage sold the single highest graded copy, a CGC 9.0 dubbed the pay copy, as the book was used by the publisher to record the payments that were made to the artist for the work inside. The book sold for $43,000. $125. One has to imagine that if this copy were to come up for sale today, it would be an easy six-figure book. The question really is, would it be a mid-six-figure book, a high six-figure book, or if Namor gains favor with fans following Wakanda forever, could this incredibly rare book break the $1 million threshold? And that's a wrap. What are your thoughts on this new series? Let me know in the comments down below. I think it could be a fun way to explore different characters and still appeal to collectors of various budgets along the way. What characters would you like to see covered in upcoming episodes of A Key for Every Budget? Let me know. Happy hunting out there, and don't forget to collect responsibly. I'll see you in the next one.